Right, morning, morning. Welcome, everybody. A new day, a new week. Sun is uh, sneaking up here, so you can coming up. Uh, and uh, you know, Lee changed her mind about sending an email out. So uh, you know, we we didn't get an email, and uh, we don't know what our minds are set to this morning, and whether we're going to change them or not. But uh, my, my my guess is we're talking about how do you change your mind. Uh, or do you change your mind, and can you change your mind, and should you change your mind, and uh, I don't mind, but uh, Lee, do you? Well, as I say, I'm very grateful that this morning, uh, you know, it's a, fa a funny thing how the brain works, is that you, you give it a question, and uh, it may take a few hours or days, in my case, <laughs> for suddenly there to be this awakening, oh, 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 remember we were supposed to be talking about how do we change our mind or you know is there a way of changing our mind we're talking about mindsets on Friday and uh, and having a set mind or various things that set our mind um, and therefore the question is can we change our mind uh, and so I just thought about three things imagine three one two three um, and <laughs> And, and came from uh, just thinking about um, parenting as my examples. So my oldest child really, really taught me how to be a parent. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know if any of us are born learning or knowing how to be a parent. I think we all learn from our kids. But my oldest in particular she, she was this, the, the one that really honed <laughs> the art of parenting or the skill, let me put it that way. And uh, because she refused point blank to do anything that she didn't want to. So she, if, if, she didn't, if she didn't want to do it or, or the other thing, if she wanted to do something, she was going to do it. And the only way I figured out to get her to not do something dangerous like climbing the burglar bars or, you know, uh, diving into the deep end of a pool when she didn't know how to swim um, was reason. It was the most incredible thing that if I could explain to her the reason why it was either dangerous or not good for her or wasn't the right time. And it had to be logical. I couldn't, she knew if I was, if I was, you know, just fudging it. Um, so if, if she could understand from a logical, reasonable perspective, even from the age of two or three, that this was not a good idea or this was a good idea, then she accepted it. And she would go that route. There was no further arguments or tantrums or anything like that. So I found that quite an interesting thing, that reason. I think there are some people where reason and logic switches a click in their brain and they, they can see things and they are willing to change their minds. I think for others, I've seen it again, if I think about parenting, uh, think about all those people pre having children to be so this might be you I don't know if you've got kids or not but pre having children will say oh you can take your kids anywhere you know as a baby you just you travel you just go it, it won't change your life that's what they'll say <laughs> it won't change your life um, you can just carry on as normal and you just take the kid along with you until they have kids <laughs> Um, and, and then you realize it's a whole different story. Or, I, you know, my kid will do such and such, or my kid will do such and such, until you have the kid, and then they just don't quite fit into the pattern, you know. You know, I'll get my kid to sleep through the night, no problem. Yeah, okay, have a kid. Um, or, you know, so experience will definitely change your mind. When you're in it, and you're, you're experiencing it, there are things that you thought you knew or, or, or had an idea about, and then it will change. And then the third thing is, and it comes from NLP, actually, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is your behavior or your body 
will change your mind. That if you if you if you are feeling down and you literally your butt your shoulders are down your head is down you have the posture of I'm depressed I'm sad. If you lift your shoulders, you lift your head, you look up, it changes how you feel and then how you think. And, and so it's interesting, we've always thought that our mind is what dictates our behavior, but it can also be the other way around. So uh, we can, even if we don't believe something, even if we don't, or we, we have a set mind around something, Interestingly, if somebody changes our behavior or we choose to change our behavior just by a simple act, it can in fact change our mind. So that's my thinking around changing your mind. <laughs> good, good. So there you go, Laura. That's the topic for this morning. Welcome. Uh, can you change your mind? Should you change your mind? And uh, if you do, how do you do? How do you change your mind? So that, that's, that's where we're heading this morning. I know someone never changes his mind as Trevor. So let's get across to Trevor next. He just can't find it. That's the real problem. Okay. Found the <laughs> unmute button. Yo, don't catch me by surprise here. Um, try and give me some warning. Now, look, this change in mind thing. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just deviate a little bit. Um, and <laughs> and uh, But it actually ties into changing the mind. Over the weekend... Uh, I happened to put on a channel that had cliff diving in St. Raphael. Uh, I don't know if anyone actually saw it. And there were a couple of things that I was absolutely blown away by there. Um, and, and number one was the condition tone of the males and the females, the divers that were involved in that particular uh, challenge. It was uh, Saint Raphael of of France. Um, just the quality of individuals today uh, are absolutely incredible. But now here's where it comes to changing one's mind. I watched these guys climb up a cliff, a hundred foot high, and it reminded me of the time when I. Oh, it was the first time I ever went on a school water polo tour up to Ellis Park. And there was this board up there that I'd never seen before, a 10 meter board or 30 feet. And, and as you say, I was probably like your oldest daughter there. Don't tell me not to do it. So our coach turned around and said, listen, guys, you guys have got a tournament to play. None of you go up to the top of that thing and jump off. Well, silly boy, um, because I immediately went straight up uh, to the top of this thing. And I was absolutely determined I was going to jump off this thing. And when I got to the top, I really wanted to change my mind, but I couldn't because everyone now down below <laughs> was sitting and having a look. And, and I must tell you, there was one thing at the top of this, the, the fear, and, and I tend to have come from a background where I didn't really experience too much fear. And at the top of this blooming board, uh, 10 meters high, um, I went to the edge of this blooming thing and looked down. I've never seen anything so high, and I realized I don't like heights. Um, but I was at the top of this blooming thing, and I had to go. And I also knew that if I jumped, uh, I wasn't going to actually land straight because I'd always dived off things. So I dived off this blooming thing. Anyway, um, that all went very well. But I remember the fear going through and almost, in fact, a large number of my mates actually got up there, turned around, and they climbed back down off this thing. Then I'm watching these guys, super athletes. They are so conditioned, jumping off a cliff three times higher than the Ellis Park 10 meter board, a hundred foot or something like, uh, I think they said it was about 28 meters. Um, 
I, I mean, what are people, what's going through people's minds and how have people developed? I bet you Tabisa will turn around to us and say he jumps off blooming quarries in somewhere in Limpopo that are uh, 30 meters high. Um, these young folk today are made of so much more than we were ever made, I believe. Um, so uh, I hope that just ties into uh, this thing of changing changing minds. I can tell you right now, I would never go to the top of this blooming cliff and jump off of the cliff. And by the way, I watch them closely uh, because you know, um, you don't have to be super skilled at anything. And, and Ivan argued with me. In fact, he annoyed me the other day um, because he pushed my button uh, when I turned around and said, hey, you don't have to be super skilled at something. You just have to watch these people and try and replicate the one, two or three things they do well. And I watch them closely as they walk to the edge of that blooming thing, 30 meters, at, uh, yes, 30 meters up high, 28 meters up high on this cliff. Uh, and not one of them actually dived head first. Um, they all in their entries, and but I'm, I mean, they did the rollover, somersault sideways all over the place, and they came in feet first, which actually told me that the pressure on your head would probably explode at that particular height, and that the only way they could enter was feet first. It was the most amazing thing to see. And then I started thinking of guys like Oscar Chalupski and people who are now surfing 100 foot waves and, and how, uh, I mean, for us, a 10 foot wave used to be a giant wave. These guys are now surfing the same size wave that these people are jumping off 100 foot waves. Um, would we actually exist uh, against these youngsters today? I don't know. Okay, does that relate to change in your mind? I don't know. So I'll throw it over to anyone else who wants to pick up what the topic was, because no one told me what the topic was this morning, and I was well prepared. Well, I think clearly diving off that uh, high uh, dive, diving board, uh, Trevor, changed your mind. You know, it's never been the same since. So. <laughs> well, well, I wear a cap because my head is flat, and I try and give it the um you know sort of round shape something similar to it <laughs> uh, okay well yeah you better go back to that swing pool and see if you can pick up the pieces so Jasper, how do you change your mind morning easy just attend this forum and uh, try and make sense of the speakers before you because uh, i was going in one direction and then after trevor in another direction now i, I actually I'm stuck. I don't know where to go. So, uh, <coughs> um, yeah. You know, say when you use your finger and you engage gear, if you, you engage gear like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think let me just go on. A, I wanted to do it after, after the first uh, uh, thing. I wanted to actually use you guys as, as my consultants to say, how do I change someone else's thinking? Uh, and uh, maybe I should still do that because I've got a business connection with uh, he's brilliant. He's, he's key in the one business, uh, got all the licenses, all the stuff. Uh, and at times his brilliance come through in some documents that he create and does things. But uh, our style of operation right now is fr frustrating me no end. And he's a nice guy. We even had some, you know, time together. Uh, but when it comes to commitment and I say, okay, let's meet at that time, then it can be that time or it can't be that time. Uh, uh, and when you commit to do something, it can be that thing or that time or that result or it can't be uh, so it's okay when it's not a critical endeavor but when it's critical and it starts to affect a whole lot of uh, people uh, then I, I'm starting to have challenges where I would normally just extricate myself from the relationship and say you know stuff it this I can't work with this guy in this case I can't he is literally the key uh, of that whole company. So now I said, all right, do I change? 
uh, do I become like that? So less is fair, you know, lot, uh, let happen what, what needs to happen. But then you can't build a business. You can't be precise. You can't put in structures. So, uh, so <laughs> uh, I want to maybe throw it that back at you and that will be my contribution. How do we, if we work with people uh, and somehow it doesn't work out, how do we change them? Or is there no way that we can change other people's behavior? And I'm even willing to change myself. Uh, and I had so in the past, uh, I never thought I would be, uh, let's say, uh, associated with the sales industry. And uh, with kicking and screaming, I got myself uh, changing my mind on that and became quite good at that. And then now I'm in the insurance industry and I never see myself involved in that and kicking and screaming, I'm now in that and I did what had to happen. But now, how do you change your mind? And I think Lee, you gave us a bit of a key with your daughter is to say, what is their behavioral mode? And then adjust to the behavioral mode. But uh, I'll just, I think my contribution today is a question. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jasper. I love it when you give us all these questions. You're supposed to provide answers, you know, don't you know that's what you're doing here. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'll try and change your mind about that, uh, you know, in some future sessions. But let's see what Dr. Tobiso has to say about uh, changing your mind this morning. So across to you, Tobiso. Maybe we should just uh, change our modes and switch off our videos for Tobiso for a moment, just because I know he's having a bit of issues with his connectivity there. <laughs> Um, thank you for that, Ivan. Um, I think that it's a bit difficult to change, you know, um, your mindset because we have habits and our minds are actually programmed a certain way, you know. Um, but the first thing in, of course, knowing how to change your mind is, I think, awareness. And have to have, you have to identify the habit that you want to change, you know. And I think that when you have that, the first thing to actually do is to, you know, just to stop engaging with what you want to change. You know, you don't have to change the habits exactly, but you need to move in steps, you know. So the first thing, of course, is just to alter that, you know, it is to stop engaging. That gives you a time to actually process things in your mind, you know. And I think that another important thing that you have to do, of course, is that you have to realize that you are not your thoughts, you know? Thoughts are just there, you know? They are there every time. There are things that just happen, you know? You have to get into a position where you realize that you are not your thoughts and you can actually get into a position where you actually see your thoughts, you know? Um, to actually do that because to know how to actually see your thoughts because thoughts are difficult things you know I think that you have to practice things such as mindfulness meditation you know because they actually um, enable you to actually see your thoughts and not to identify with your thoughts you know um, I think that this is very key you know in regards to not really identifying with your thoughts you know you must be able to actually see your thoughts and identify with the thoughts. Just look at your thoughts and, you know, laugh at them. I think that if you can do that, you have a self-mastery, you know, in yourself. And you will be in a position to actually know how to put across your thoughts, you know, and to not identify too much with your thoughts. And I think that that is a big thing when it comes to knowing how to change your mind, you know, thoughts. You must be able to identify your thoughts and you must be just, yes, just love of your thoughts. Yes, yes, Trevor, you know. I think that when it comes to meditation and mindfulness, it's like, wow, you know, if you can do that, then perfect, you know. And I think that another way to actually change your mind, you know, um, after you have stopped engaging, you know, with the habits that you want to change, I think that you should try out new routines. Yes, I think that you should try out new routines and actually implement new habits that you want to 
try out, you know, because now you have actually stopped and now you can try out new routines and actually implement them in your life and create new habits, you know. Um, another way, I think, to actually change your mind, you know, is to actually um, fill your mind with different content, you know, um, content that you content that you want, you know, and how you can actually change your mind with this. You can fill your mind with content um, on, on sites like maybe, you know, YouTube. You know, we live in a world where like content is right. You know, you can actually choose what you want to learn, you know. So another way that you can actually change your mind is to actually feed your mind with content that you want and engage in courses, you know, internet courses, online courses, I mean, you know, um, they actually help you to shape your mind. You know? And when you have the knowledge that these courses provide, um, your look is actually changed, you know? So I think that you should actually fill your mind with things that you want to see, you know? That's a big thing when it comes to changing your mind. You know, you must feed your mind with content that you want to, you know? Um, that is how you also change your mind because repetition is everything, you know? And I think that another way, of course, to change your mind is to travel, you know? The beautiful thing about travel is that you actually see things, you know? You actually see people, a different world, you know? that existed before you, you know, like the place existed, like you were not there, like you don't have an input on how things are actually run, you know? So I think that travel can actually make you see things differently, you know? You can actually see different cultures, you can actually identify with other people, you know? You can actually engage in new customs, that actually shapes how you see the view and the, see the world and how you view things, you know? So I think that travel and just being out there actually exposes you to different things, you know? That, that actually is a factor that can actually change your mind, you know? It is, it can wire your, your, your mind differently. And because I'm talking about wiring your, different, your, your mind differently now, um, I think another way is to actually try out a new language, you know? I think that when you try out a new language and, you know, I think it ac can actually change how you see things, you know, because language as a medium is different, you know, and different languages has um, ways in which it decodes the world, you know? So I think that different why I think, you know, when it comes to, to language, because um, your mind is wired a different way, you know, and language actually, you know, uh, Oops, I think Tabisa has lost his language. Uh, he, seems to, he seems to have frozen on us there, unfortunately. Right. Anyway, let's let's go traveling and change the language, and uh, that means we're switching across to Chicago and to a strange a language called American. But uh, you know, I don't know. We understand it, but we try. So over to you, Laura. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, change your mindset. Everything changes. Oh goodness! What y'all doing to me this morning? Um, the only thing I can change is myself. And to a certain extent, I do have control over my mindset. Mindset is a state of being. So when I think about things like, oh, I don't know, who are my eyes? Okay, I can't change that. Yes, I can. You can't change the inherent nature, the makeup of the color of my eyes. And I can also Choose to change my mind by turning off the chat. <laughs> and um, I can, this is tough. I kind of like coming in late. 
because I'm, I'm I'm pulling at straws and that means it's authentic and natural and raw. I can change the color of my eyes to an extent that um, what will then be produced is fabricated if I do change it because um, it's not my innate way of coming into this world. Oh, goodness gracious. I need a moment to continue processing and do not want to fabricate or create gibberish. <laughs> the only thing I control is, is the, the one thing I can count on is change. Life is a, set, uh, a, a series of paradoxes, oxymorons. Okay, now that that's not even funny. That's not even funny. That is so not even funny. Because I can choose to leave this conversation, which I do have control over. And uh, when it comes to phobias and um, knowing that changing my mindset is understanding that when I come into contact with people who do not serve my best, best person, my best self, I can change my mindset saying, I don't want to have anything to do with that person any longer. So I can block, not going to happen today. Or I can choose to accept into my reality. This is so not going where I intended to because I had no intention whatsoever. So it's going to flow, go flow as it goes. The only thing I can choose is change is me. I can control my reaction or response to a particular person about whatever they say, do, or try to be in my face, um, which sometimes isn't pleasant because I know just trying to jab and judge and nudge um, and or. I can change them, not gonna happen, unless they're of their own volition to do so. Or I can try to change the circumstances, so not gonna happen. Let's take, uh, let's take, let's take COVID for a brief example. Didn't do it to me. It's likely that um, nobody else did it to me and the whole circumstances isn't about me. So change my, change my stance change my world. So up to this point, I am going to change and pivot to um, putting it back to Ivan. So he then can present the next person with the opportunity to share and shut down the chat. <laughs> Why would we do that? I mean, you know, Charlotte, Charlotte here behind me just uh, asked me to, to switch across. So, you know, you, Anything yeah. about Charlotte? Yeah, um, that's just uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Not funny, <laughs> so good. not funny. Ed, maybe I better change my background. I don't know about my mind, but uh. that would be quite wise. I thought it was quite interesting because, with the exception of Laura, we were all here on Friday when we agreed what the subject was. And then we all blame Lee for not sending the email out because we don't know what the subject is. Um, I must admit, I thought we were going to discuss, can we change our values? Not can we change our mindset? So I prepared my whole thing based on that. So I'm going to take the Nell Amendment and talk about exactly what I want to talk about. <clears throat> now, I've noticed that it's a human condition that we tend to debase words. So let me just give an example. I loved my wife. Well, actually, I still love her. She's just not my wife anymore. And, and that's the stuff that poems and songs are written about. Yet people say, I love that red dress. What you're going to form a deep and meaningful relationship for the rest of your life with a piece of fabric. So we debase the word love. And when it comes to values, you know, values are about things like um, honesty being the central foundation of how I live my life. That's what a value is about. It's something really important, like, like, um, you know, honesty, integrity, respect. But then imagine you're in a meeting, in a committee meeting, and there's some old guy rabbiting on about something completely boring and off subject. 
Um, I don't think that happens very often, but you know, and, and, and the chair will turn around and say, thank you, George, we value your contribution. And what she's meaning is, God, you're a boring old far. I wish you'd shut up. And I wish you'd never been elected to that committee. But they can't say that because it's not the done thing. So we have debased value from, from being something really in, important like integrity to almost being an insult. Um, and I think that's what we kind of do with mindsets really. And Lee touched on it because yes, as a parent, you think, right, you know, I'm gonna take my child everywhere. And the first time you go for a weekend away with your young child, and you can't get all the paraphernalia in the boot or trunk for, for Laura's um, benefit, you decide actually we'll forget about going away until they're a bit older. Um, and all those things you think you were going to do, um, you don't do because they become too, too difficult. And I think that's the same with um, mindsets. We start with a strong mindset, strong values, idealism, and then life gets in the way and we debase them. Just like we debase words, we debase our mindset and say, do you know what? I'll be like a river. I'll take the course of least resistance. I'll roll with it. I, I won't. So yeah, we, we, we don't change our mindsets. Our mindsets are changed for us by circumstances, like trying to fit all the paraphernalia for taking your child away in the boot of a very small car. If you ever tried it with nappies, cots, toys, you name it, whatever. So I think <clears throat> we are changed by circumstances. Unless we are some amazing person with incredible integrity, perhaps like Nelson Mandela, who wasn't changed by circumstances, who stood steadfast. Um, so that's my contribution on it. A bit of a bit of a, 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 a sort of wonder, but um, I'd just like to say we should all write down what Lee decides we're going to, going to talk about rather than rely on the email. <laughs> Thank you, Edward, and we really appreciate your contribution. <laughs> uh, there you go. No, that was... Uh, <laughs> I, I think it is interesting. I, I think, um, you know, it's been said a couple of times, I mean, the only person we can truly change is ourselves. Uh, the question is, can we influence others to, to, change, uh, to change themselves? And, uh, and I think, you know, in some, in some cases we can, in some cases we, we obviously can't. You know, if you can if you can reason with a two year old Lee, you can probably reason with just about anybody. So uh, I, th I think you've got some good skills laid down there by by reasoning with your reasoning with your two year old because uh, that that sounds uh, like a task I wouldn't want to take on. Um, it's pretty yes, but had to had to pop off because uh, you know I think sometimes the way to to uh, get someone else to change their mind is to get them to a point where they believe that the ideas that they're agreeing to are their own, not yours. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if you can get that one right, uh, you're probably on the track to changing their, changing their mind. But uh, uh, I, I think it is interesting, and Lee also sp spoke about changing your, 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 your posture and your, your physical attitude um, sometimes to, to change your mind. And I, I can remember back in my early days when I started my very first business, uh, I, I really struggled uh, with uh, cold calling uh, on, the, on the telephone. And um, uh, somebody said to me, you know, what you've got to do is you've got to get up, you've got to get dressed in your, your tie and your suit and, and, and so on. And when you pick up the telephone, you stand up and you actually make the telephone call standing up. And it makes an amazing difference, believe it or not. Um, just, uh, you know, instead of sitting in your chair, you know, you're sort of starting to slouch because you're not really wanting to do this and you're not feeling so great. And... You know, it's uncomfortable and it's, un, you know, unfamiliar and all the rest of it. And uh, then you get all dressed up and you stand up nice and tall and, uh, you know, pick up the phone and you just come across completely differently. And I mean, I got appointments in those days. And when I arrived at the appointment, you know, the people would say to me, you know, I'm really not sure why I gave you this appointment. You know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it was quite interesting. And it was just simply that, that change in, in, 
in my physical circumstances and, and approach to the situation that actually changed my voice, changed the the way that I actually came across on, on the telephone. So yeah, you can you can change. Not that it changed my mind about selling and salesmen. I mean, that's why I love Trevor so much. You know, I mean, he's you know he's perennial salesman. Uh, got to deal with them somehow but uh, I try and change his mind now and again but you know the trouble is he forgets that I've changed his mind and he just goes back to the way he was so you know it's a, it's a, it's a it seems to be an endless loop that I'm going through here anyway enough rambling from me I don't know that I've changed anybody's mind but uh, Ed yes uh, just when you were talking about how to change people reminded me of something I did with my children <clears throat> they started picking up that sort of dreadful speak about um I, I, I can't even think of the examples, like yeah, but, but, but some of the sort of the, the, the language children used to use, so we call it hip, I suppose. So to try and stop them from doing it, I started using those words. And of course, your dad using those words is very uncool. So they used to moan about it. And I said, well, look, I'm finding it very difficult not to do it. How about you find me every time I say, I don't know, cool or whatever the word was. And they, they went along with that. And they used to find me when I said it and I put the money in a pot and we used to actually go out for a meal once we got enough money for the pot. But what they didn't realize was it was actually stopping them from saying it. And they actually stopped saying those words, but they thought they were stopping me from saying them. And we had a nice meal at the end of the time because I used to just occasionally throw a few words in to keep it going. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right. If people think it's their idea or, or you're not trying to change them, then they will change. Yeah, good bit of reverse psychology now and again always does the trick. So there you go. Right. So uh, topic for what is tomorrow? Tuesday. Must be Tuesday. It was Monday today. It is Monday today, I think. But, uh, you know, it might change my mind about that. Well, Tuesday is our personal mastery day. So we pick up the topic from previous uh, Tuesday. So, so Laura, the way that uh, Wisdom's Chats is now structured is Monday, Wednesday, Friday are one topic flowing to the next. And then Tuesdays is specifically focused on personal mastery and Thursdays on business fundamentals. And we on both of those days, we basically following, we are following uh, uh, the Wisdom's track in terms of our programs relating to personal mastery and business fundamentals. So tomorrow we will be talking about the secret of success. What is the secret of success? That is the topic for tomorrow. Uh, we, we cover very, very, you know, basic topics that we can easily cover in half an hour. That's, that's what we do at Wisdom Chats. Uh, and then Wednesday, we've got a choice. We can either follow on from today, which in my mind would be, how do you change somebody else's mind? I think that's like a, a worthwhile topic to pick up after today, or we can pick up something from tomorrow. So maybe let's make that decision tomorrow. All righty, good, good. So don't keep any secrets. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow and uh, we'll talk about secrets. Um, and I promise I won't put up any more spider pictures, Laura. So yeah, I'll, but I might change my mind. You know, you never know. <laughs> but anyway, have a great day for the folks and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the morning. We will talk about the secret of success. Have a good one. Cheers Bye now. everyone.